Welcome everyone, good afternoon, uh, good morning, uh, wherever you are based out of. I'm Raj Gill, President and CTO of Scalability Experts, and I'm very delighted to be getting the opportunity to talk to you about big data. As you all know that big data has been uh, got, getting a lot of buzz in the marketplace, especially around manageability and the actual the definition and value proposition of big data. It is something that the companies are, many companies are looking at investing, and Scalably Experts over the last year has developed a significant practice around big data and helped several customers. Uh, one of the scenarios that I'm going to actually show you today is from uh, the deployments that Scalably Experts did uh, recently uh, to help solve a big data problem for one of our customers. So uh, with further delay, um, let me just go ahead and introduce you to the agenda. So what I would like to do is first help define what big data is. Now, I, I know there's a lot of material out there. Some of it is defining big data in many different ways. But this is what we believe at Scalable Experts, based on our expert expertise, uh, would be the definition of big data. And why should you care about big data, right? Um, and how to solve the big data problem. Uh, when you're looking at solving the big data problem, you know, what are the key building blocks of big data architecture? Based on the, uh, based on the uh, experience that Scalable Experts has gained, uh, we believe there are uh, the, the following key components for any big data architecture. Uh, one is the a, a, a massively parallel processing of clients. So as many of you may know, one of the key characteristics of a big data problem is you have high volume of data whether it's structured or unstructured, and you want to have that volume of data processed very rapidly so you can render it to a, a user dashboard. The massively parallel processing uh, appliance, uh, which Microsoft offers uh, called PDW, Parallel Data Warehouse, is, a, is sort of like the key component of a big data solution. Uh, the other aspect is Hadoop. Uh, we're going to talk about Hadoop a little bit more. Some of you may not be familiar with. Uh, I've got some slides where I'm going to talk a little bit more about what it, what Hadoop is and what it does for you. But it's essentially designed to store data in a in a file format in a data specifically the one that is not structured and can allow you to traverse that data and and analyze that data in a rapid manner. And then you you also have this in-memory analytics where uh, in, a, in a big data scenario, there are two criteria. One is the characteristics, one is the volume, and the other is velocity. So uh, we're going to look at a demo where we're using Stream Insight to analyze real-time data that's coming in to uh, a user uh, database and how it's rendered into, into the dashboard. Okay, so let's just dive right into it. You probably have seen this slide or, or aspects of this slide before. Uh, the world of data has changed. Okay, so there is a you know, 10x increase uh, in the next five years in the amount of data. Some of you who are managing databases or data structures in your environment probably know that the volume of data is exploding year after year. 80% of, 85% of that, that data is new data types, right? Um, mostly unstructured data that is uh, not in your domain. And uh, according to Gartner, uh, by 2015, you know, organizations that are using big data and solving the big data problem uh, are going to be financially more uh, profitable compared to its peers by 20%. So if you're not looking at big data today, you need to start looking at this and saying, how do I start providing, if you're an IT organization, you know, how do I start providing big data solutions to my business consumers? And if you are a business consumer, you should be thinking about how can I use big data to my competitive advantage and, and gain better visibility into my, my consumers. So if you look at uh, how the big data has evolved, uh, these are some of the phases that it has, it has gone through. I mean, if you look at you know, ERP systems or CRM systems that you currently are running, uh, you, you probably have data in gigabytes uh, that you're managing, and then you have the Web 2.0 uh, 2 uh, with, with uh, search logs and web logs, you know, where you're running into terabytes. And now when you open up the big data to solve the unstructured and social media data, you know, you're talking about several hundred terabytes or potentially petabytes of data that you have to solve. So uh, that's where you get into the big data problem. And the challenges are how do you design a solution that actually uh, helps you process this volume of data in a very rapid manner. 
So why big data, right? So why should you care about big data? Why should why is this interesting to you? And why should you start thinking about how do I design my solutions around big data? Well, some of the uh, stuff from Barton and McKinsey studies uh, recently is within the next five years, enterprise data is expected to grow 650 uh, percent. Data will grow 800 percent over the next five years. 80 percent of, of being unstructured. If you look at just the Facebook users, uh, more than 600 million Facebook users added. 30 billion pieces of content. Every business today wants to find a way to look at this data that's on, on Facebook. How are their users? What are they interacting with? Where are they uh, socializing? And what are their likes, dislikes, so that we can use that data to better market your products and, and, and penetrate those, uh, those consumers. If you just look at the Twitter community, it generates about a terabyte of tweets you know, every day. Uh, that's a lot of data, right? So a, a retailer using, uh, you know, just look at, a, for example, a retailer, that's a very consumer-oriented uh, business, uh, using big data to its fullest potential could increase its operating margins by more than 60%. And this is by better addressing the, the, the consumer needs, by, by growing the market share, and so forth. Big data also helps solve these customer challenges, uh, you know, making sense out of your data, understanding wide variety of data, um, not all of it is structured, uh, enabling real-time analytics. So as your consumer's uh, behavior changes, you want to be able to analyze that in a real-time manner and be able to use that to make decisions on promotions, for example, or uh, giveaways and, and how to attract and move those consumers into your retail stores so you can sell them products. So here's a scenario that Scale of the Experts uh, helped the customer overcome recently, and I wanted to just uh, give you a high-level view of what the scenario is. So the two key aspects of the big data problem is volume of data and velocity of data, right? You have large volumes, and you have data velocity at a very high speed that's being generated. So here's a scenario where on the left side, you have a, a business that has different promotions. It has promotion A, uh, B, or C, and they are looking to launch a product and, uh, and they want to understand which promotion they should be using to maximize their product sales. A uh, very classic scenario, uh, imagine if this product is being released in two different cities within the United States or two different cities across the globe. You know, you have very different set of consumers, different demographics, different consumer behavior. So you want to know which one of these promotions will make sense, and the idea is to maximize sales uh, and buying behavior of your product, right? Uh, so you want to compare and contrast and analyze uh, all this data on the right, which is sitting in, you know, potentially in a cloud or unstructured data. So you have a lot of uh, uh, consumer sentiment data, Facebook, Twitter, all this data that's not in your domain uh, that you want to include as part of your uh, part of your analysis. So with that, you know, I want to take you right to uh, the scenario. And, and what I'm going to do is, obviously, this customer that we work with, we had some very huge volumes that we cannot uh, reproduce in the demo. So what I've done is i tried to shrink the uh, demo down to a more reasonable way so you can actually see the gist of what we did for this customer. So here I have uh, uh, some data in my SQL Server. So here I have some data that is sitting in my SQL Server database. And I have uh, a series of databases. I have some tables. I have two tables here, sales header and decision tree. So the sales header is basically a, a table that has all my consumers. As you can see, this is my, my customers that have bought my product in the past. And I, I've got, a, I've got a, the characteristics information about my consumers that are typical buyers okay, of my product. So I have a product buyer column. Uh, has two values, one or zero. So a one is that a product, uh, the consumer is likely to buy my product. A zero is where the consumer is not likely to buy my product. Um, so basically, I have uh, about uh, let's let's look at how many rows I have in this in this table. So there are about eighteen thousand rows, and I also have a decision tree uh, table. So I have a sales header table where I have 18,000 uh, consumer information, and then I have a decision tree where um, basically I will store, right now I have no rows in it, but basically has uh, 
I'll, I'll be importing some data from Hadoop into this, this uh, environment to uh, understand uh, which of my promotions are going to be likely that the, the, these consumers are, are likely to, to, to buy. And then I have my uh, a Java program that basically uh, uh, has the uh, algorithms for which my uh, uh, that tells me which consumer is going to buy what kind of product. So uh, I'm just laying down this this uh, uh, scenario, and I'll come back to it once we talk a little bit more about uh, Hadoop uh, and 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 do some discussions around that. So how can uh, big data help? Uh, so big data can unlock a significant value by making information transparent and usable uh, at a very high frequency. So uh, know how much consumers can spend. You can know how much consumers can spend on, on your product or, or your competitors' products. Uh, and, and in the scenario that I'm creating, uh, I'll show you how uh, I could use the Hadoop environment and a big data architecture to help identify which promotions are likely to be more applicable to a certain set of uh, consumers. So characteristics of a big data. So essentially, you have um, uh, different data sources. You have large volume of data that you are managing. And you have new data types, structured, unstructured, images, uh, and so forth. Uh, and um, a lot of different types of uh, uh, data that you're processing. And then you're basically analyzing and getting insight into that data. So in the traditional e-commerce data flow, what you have is you have data coming from all your sources into a, a database, whether it's a SQL Server Oracle database. You uh, create a multi-dimensional manner of uh, structure to it, and you put it in the data warehouse. And then uh, you have a bunch of you know user behavior logs that you process. You convert it into a structured format, and you ETL into data warehouse. So this is the kind of the traditional way you manage large volumes of data. So you have to bring the data into your domain even if it's an external domain. So for example, you would bring a web log from uh, Amazon or some other website, and, and that tells you, you know, your users what kind of uh, click behavior they had, and you would process those logs and actually load it into, into the data warehouse, in, in, whether it's in SQL Server or And anything that you don't need, you kind of you know, delete. So the, the new, the, the big data way of looking at data flow is that you still have uh, your structured data, which is coming in from your sources, uh, internal to your domain or external to your domain, and you convert it into a structured format, and you move it into a SQL Server or Oracle data warehouse. But then all the external data that you get, which is uh, mostly unstructured uh, and maybe very cloud-based, uh, you know, you actually move it into Hadoop. And uh, Hadoop uh, could sit on premise, or uh, or it could sit in, in the cloud. So uh, and now you have the ability to process that data in Hadoop uh, and then uh, take the output from it and move it into your data warehouse, and which is the scenario of the demo that I'm going to show you uh, as, as we saw earlier. So the Microsoft Big Data Solution uh, has uh, the, the following foundation. So you have the, the top layer, which is your Power View and your Excel and, and your Power Pivot and, and integration with SharePoint. And then you have your multi-dimensional layer with uh, the analysis services, SQL Server analysis services. And you also have reporting services. Uh, and then uh, Microsoft offers Hadoop uh, on Windows uh, Azure, uh, which could be in the cloud, and, and also on-premise. So um, Microsoft has adopted the Hadoop uh, Apache uh, standard. And, uh, and then you have the Microsoft EDW or a PDW which is the appliance that we, we're going to look at. Uh, and there are interconnectors uh, uh, available where you can connect right from your EDW or PDW into your Hadoop data and analyze that and render it to your users in the front end. And all the sources that you traditionally get this data from, like sensors, crawlers, uh, ERP, CRM, uh, are still uh, you know, applicable. So before we go into the Hadoop part of the demo, I wanted to cover the, the uh, some introduction to Hadoop for some of you who may not be familiar with, with what Hadoop really means. So Hadoop is an Apache open source initiative for the distributed processing of large data sets across clusters of machines. So think of this uh, that, that Hadoop is where you can dump all of your unstructured data, not having to worry about you know, uh, you know, converting it into a structured format. 
that data sits in, in, in a flat file, in a file structure, uh, HDFS, which is the Hadoop file structure. And it can be processed and queried through Hadoop MapReduce, which is the programming language uh, that came out of the standard to, to go through and traverse this uh, HDFS file system and bring out the data. And, and we'll show you in a minute how you actually do that. It's designed to scale up from single server to thousands of machines. Uh, there's full redundancy built into Hadoop, so, uh, and that's why it can manage hundreds of terabytes or petabytes of data. So when you look at analyzing social media data, you know, one of your concerns is, I've got all this uh, hundreds of terabytes of data that I don't want to bring in-house in my domain and start incurring the cost of managing and converting it into a structured form and then analyzing it. So Hadoop is a great solution where you could have all that data loaded in, into Hadoop. For example, you could use the Windows Microsoft Windows Hadoop uh, in, in Azure uh, and then just process that data and then, uh, you know, delete it or, or not use it when you're done. So Hadoop MapReduce is a programming model. So any query, any way, uh, when you're deciding to query against that data in Hadoop, you have to program in MapReduce. Uh, and there are some other, other Hadoop-related projects as well. You may hear about Cassandra and, and uh, Scoop. We're going to use Scoop to actually it's a command line utility to load and, 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 and migrate data between Hadoop and other sources. So this is just a very high level uh, uh, you know, view of what Hadoop is. So how does Hadoop work? So all of the data gets stored in file format and then um, uh, it gets queried with uh, MapReduce and access uh, through the programming model that's available to uh, get the result sets. And Hadoop can actually parallelly run the MapReduce queries against all of the uh, all of the nodes, and then uh, give you the results. All right. So with that, I would like to uh, get back to the demo again. All right. So I have some uh, Hadoop commands that I'm going to actually run. So uh, just bear with me. Some of this stuff might take a little bit time to to actually execute. But uh, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, just run an FS to look at what is the uh, the uh, input from the, from the uh, I have a folder called decision tree and, and input, and I'm just looking at what's in that file uh, folder right now. As you can see, there are no files. The next thing is I'm going to use a scoop utility, and I'm going to actually import the data into, uh, into uh, Hadoop. So what I'm doing here is I'm using Scoop. I'm connecting to my SQL Server, and if you remember, I had I showed you the sales header data table. So I'm going to connect to the sales header table and, and actually extract my 18,000 rows of data about my users, and I'm going to output to the decision tree input sales data uh, directory. So uh, it's going to run this command. It's going to take a, take just a couple of minutes, a couple of seconds. And, and what I should see is a, a sales data folder created, and within that folder, uh, my data extracted. So here's a great example of how, within Hadoop, you can connect to any source, whether it's here I'm connecting to SQL Server, but you could connect to Oracle, you could connect to any kind of uh, marketplace, Twitter data, and import that data into Hadoop. And what Hadoop does is it actually, so here it is, it, it actually extracted 18,484 records for my SQL Server. And then I'm going to just verify how the data is actually stored and, and uh, connected. <coughs> so here I have, uh, as you can see, uh, uh, a folder created called Sales Data. And, um, uh, and in that Sales Data, I'm going to actually go look up. So the Hadoop command is fs dash ls, which is a list of the files in the folder. Uh, so uh, it, it actually tells me that I have these four files created. So what Hadoop has done is taken those 18,000 records and actually stored it into four files. It's the HDFS format it uses and breaks that data down into four files, and that's where my data is stored. Now, if you had more than 18,000 records, imagine if you had, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, millions and or billions of records, you would have hundreds of these files which are created on different, uh, you know, um, Hadoop uh, nodes. 
Okay. So right now, just so I give you the context, I'm actually in the cloud. So this Hadoop cluster is sitting in, in the cloud, and I'm actually running these. Uh, uh, I just exported 18,000 rows from my SQL Server, which is sitting in my data center, and I export it into a Hadoop cluster in the cloud. So now I'm going to actually uh, run a, a, a uh, Java program that uh, uh, has the the three promotions, the algorithm for three promotions, and uh, against this data of 18,000 rows to identify which promotion is likely to, uh, and this is my Java program, I'm just going to compile this. It's called a decision tree, so I'm just going to go ahead and run this and, and, and go ahead and compile this, this program right now. So this Java program is actually, uh, will be run on Hadoop uh, in, 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 uh, in, in the cloud. And, and it will run against my Hadoop data that I just exported from SQL Server. All right. So here, when I look at uh, uh, the decision, so that's the decision tree .jar, which is my Java program. And uh, it actually has uh, my algorithms, which I'm going to run against uh, my uh, data. So here's the way I do it. Uh, I go ahead and just run the uh, uh, jar, decision tree .jar, uh, program against my uh, uh, sales data input input folder, and then it's going to create a output folder uh, with the with the results. So uh, let's go ahead and run that. It's just going to take a couple of seconds to complete. So what I'm doing now is imagine if this data was hundreds of terabytes. So this is I'm obviously you know running it against only eighteen thousand rows, but typically in the scenario you would have hundreds of millions of rows. Of data in sitting in Hadoop, and and uh, and you've got you got a mix of consumer sentiment, their behavior data, and uh, what websites they're going to, and so forth and so on. Who are they socializing with? And and I'm using all that data to actually identify who is more likely, based on the consumer behavior, uh, likely to buy my product based on the promotion I have. Okay, so I have I have two different promotions that I'm going to go test against. So my program just completed. And then let me take a look at my output that I got from my uh, my Java program. So let's go back and just run the the folder listing. So as you can see, I have a file created on uh, this part 000 file created under the sales data uh, folder. Okay as my output. Now I'm um, just going to do some cleanup and then I'm going to look at what's the contents of that uh, file or the output from my Java program. So here's the, uh, the, uh, here's the way I'm going to look into the, into the uh, uh, output. All right. So as you can see, I have uh, I have the following output. So I have two. I have the first decision tree, where out of eighteen thousand rows, uh, my algorithm said that for four thousand nine hundred and nineteen rows, it was inconclusive. So in other words, I, I wasn't. You know, it's not clear that whether the, the consumer is going to likely buy the product or not. Uh, four thousand three hundred ninety-one uh, is negative, which means the consumer is not likely to buy the product. And then 4,213 is positive, which is the consumer is likely to buy the product. And by the way, out of 18,000 for the first uh, promotion, only 13,523 qualified. And then on the second uh, uh, decision tree, which is my uh, second promotion, I have a, a much smaller positive count, which is 1,373. So what this tells me is that my promotion the first promotion, where I had 4,213 positive uh, um, uh, individuals uh, from the list of consumers I had, uh, that promotion is going to be much better than the second promotion, uh, based on the kind of uh, demographics uh, and the consumer sentiment data that I have. So I've got this output in Hadoop. So what I've done is I've used Hadoop for what it's really good at, managing large volumes of data, unstructured data. I've gone through all that data and, and run my algorithms, which is which are part of my my Java program, 
and, and, and created an output of uh, who is likely to buy, who is not likely to buy, and based on that I can make a decision on whether I should, uh, which promotion I should launch in, into that, uh, uh, for my product. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take that output from the uh, Java program and import into my SQL Server. Okay, so that's the beauty of working with Hadoop is you can import and export data in and out of any database or source very easily. So here I've exported the data uh, by using Scoop. So Scoop can be used to import or export the data. So now I'm going to uh, take those uh, uh, results from the Java program and actually import it into uh, SQL Server. All right, it's completed. As you can see, I'm exporting about 10 records. Go back into SQL Server, and if I run my select on decision tree, uh, you would see that I have these results. Okay? So, so if I can recap, what I've done here is I have a scenario where I have multiple promotions, and I want to know which promotion is going to give me the best results from consumer product behavior perspective purchasing behavior perspective. But in order for me to find out which promotion I should be launching, I, I needed to traverse terabytes and terabytes of data, which I don't want to bother bringing into my SQL Server, into my domain, converting into structured format, and doing all kinds of stuff. So I've basically taken that data, put it into a Hadoop cluster, and I run my Java algorithms against that, created the output, and bought that output back into SQL Server, and now I can analyze against this data using my analysis services and, and relational uh, uh, and, and uh, BI tools that I've, my users are, consumers are uh, used to. All right, so hopefully this scenario uh, uh, reinforced the, the, the kind of classic big data problems that consumers have and, and how uh, we can solve them. Now, the... Uh, the other aspect of the big data is, is you have all this data that's going to be processed and Hadoop and bought into, into a SQL Server world, so you need a very, uh, a very robust architecture to process that data. So that's where the Microsoft Parallel Data Warehouse comes in, where you can have a quarter rack and a half rack or a full rack configuration to really uh, have massively, uh, massive parallel processing of your data, and, and, and you can have the results queries processed uh, as rapidly as possible. So there's the, the SQL Server, the Parallel Data Warehouse runs on SQL Server, and um, uh, it runs a different flavor of SQL Server. So you have, uh, you know, your standard enterprise edition, and then you have your SQL Server PDW, which is really designed to scale from um, terabytes to petabytes of data. It is an appliance, so it comes with the hardware and the software. And, uh, and it's the true epicenter of your big data architecture. Uh, so it runs the, a special uh, 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 kind of an enhanced version of the SQL Server engine uh, that is specifically designed for the, uh, the appliance. Uh, one of the, 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 the neat features of, of Parallel Data Warehouse, this is coming out in version 2, which is about to be released in March, sometime in March, according to Microsoft is a feature called Polybase. So what Polybase does is it actually allows you to run a DSQL query against joining data which is sitting in SQL Server as well as in Hadoop. So in, in the demo that you just saw, what I did is I actually exported data from SQL Server, bought it into Hadoop, and I ran my Java program in Hadoop, and then I bought the output back into SQL Server. With PDW uh, version 2, you will be able to write native DSQL code and join and query Hadoop data and join that against your data sitting in Parallel Data Warehouse or another SQL Server data source. And that's really, really cool because this gives you uh, a very quick, fast access to all this volume of data that may be sitting in, 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 in the cloud or on-premise uh, and, and join the data and access and, and build, your, build your result sets. So uh, the end, the Microsoft uh, law, um, architecture, the end-to-end -end data platform architecture for big data, is the uh, uh, you know the, the insight, uh, which is which is your uh, ability to get into the the analytics and predictive analytics of the data, and then you have uh, the different 
uh, on-premise as well as off-premise uh, uh, in the cloud storage of your big data uh, and the ability to manage um, uh, relational as well as unre uh, unstructured data. So uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about now is uh, give you a quick demo on the Stream Insight. So uh, what we so far saw is how is big data problem around volume of data, how that can be solved, right? Now, the other issue is the velocity of data. So imagine that all these consumers are every single day, you know, updating their Twitters, uh, updating their Facebook, uh, you know, uh, 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 generating a lot of social uh, sentiment data. Now, how does that impact your promotion? So you want to, you have this stream of data that's coming in at a very rapid velocity that you want to process, and then you want to understand uh, how it can be used to say, hey, is my promotion really working, or should I change something, or maybe maybe launch another different promotion? Uh, uh, and and that's where Stream Insight comes in. So uh, I just want to quickly give you uh, a demo of the Stream Insight capability. So here we are going to actually combine a um, um, the performance point capabilities, the integration with the map, uh, Bing maps. So I have a, a big data service that I'm running right now, and I'm going to try to simulate this scenario for you. So I have, you know, I have a sales simulator tool here. Uh, basically, I have sales, or uh, this could be consumer sentiment data. That is being generated that I want to track. So in this scenario, what I'm doing is I've got uh, the different stores in different parts of the country, and I'm, I'm, I have a goal here on the top of my dashboard. I have a dial that tells me how am I doing in terms of volume of data, all of my sales uh, that consumers are buying at my stores. And then <clears throat> I'm going to track real time as this data is generated uh, to analyze. So as you can see right now, all my, all my uh, stores are showing zero, zero sales. And I'm going to go ahead and, and start the simulation and then use Stream Insight to actually capture that real time. So I have multiple ways I'm going to look at. There's a Bing map integration here, as well as a performance point and and and, and uh, uh, dashboard integration. So uh, again, this is another uh, uh, issue with the the big data, which is the velocity. So here, as we simulate the the volume, uh, you can see that. Uh, immediately, I can start tracking the data uh, across the different sites on my Bing map. So as my data volume changes, uh, as you can see, I'm tracking New York, I'm tracking Chicago, and and and, and you know, uh, this tells me my my uh, sales stores real time. How am I doing with with my total sales? Uh, and I can go in and change the actual volume of uh, uh, data generated in each city, and then see how it reflects on my uh, the counter on my map. So this is like an example dashboard that is using the uh, that's managing the velocity aspect of big data, which is as you get consumer sentiment data, as you get users that are updating Twitters and Facebook. You know how can you track that sentiment data on a, on a real time basis and, and actually track it, so you can make decisions uh, around your your uh, uh, marketing or sales. So with that, um, I just want to come back to uh, our last slide here, which is uh, talking about the end-to-end uh, -end Microsoft data platform. So as I mentioned, um, big data, if you have uh, any of your business users asking you, if you're IT and asking you, hey, I want to analyze uh, consumer sentiment data or social media data, you have a big data problem. Uh, if you're dealing with large volumes of data, whether it's structured or unstructured, uh, you have a big data problem. Uh, if you're dealing with tracking real-time uh, uh, sentiment information uh, so that you can better track your promotions, better track your uh, uh, consumer behavior, uh, you have a big data problem. And so uh, these problems can be easily solved by using the Microsoft end-to-end -end big data uh, platform. Uh, we talked about PDW. We talked about uh, Hadoop. We talked about Stream Insight. We talked about a lot of different components here. Uh, that come together and, and help 
build a, a real solution for you that will work. Uh, so uh, with that, uh, I want to open up for questions. I want to also mention that uh, SE has a, 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 an offering in partnership with Microsoft. So if you have a customer that has a, a big data problem or, or maybe think they have a big data problem or they, they don't have a big data problem and they want to know how they can use the Microsoft stack to help solve that problem, Scale the Experts in partnership with Microsoft is offering a free big data strategy session. Uh, you can just send an email to info at scalablyexperts.com and we will follow up and, uh, and uh, schedule uh, one of our big data architects to work with you and help architect the solution. You can also go to our uh, website. There's a specific link to our big data uh, uh, page uh, and scalablyexperts.com slash solutions slash big data solutions. Uh, with that, I want to thank everybody for attending. We have a few minutes for Q&A, so I'd like to open it up and see if uh, anybody has any questions.